Hi guys. Today I'm going to show you some basic functions and tools which are using for hard surface modeling. If you are a beginner to Blender as well as hard surface modeling, make sure you have chosen the suitable key map. To know what you are using, simply go to Edit, Preferences, then click on the key map button. There are three types of key map profiles. Blender is the default one. Blender 27X is the older and I don't recommend using it. If you came from Maya 3D Max or any other software package, you can choose industry compatible profile. Here I'm using a custom made key map because I came from Maya. I have duplicated the industry compatible key map and edited some keys and saved it as Maya key map. Later I'm going to show some basic modeling tools. So it will be very easy for you to use the shortcut keys when following this tutorial. To find the shortcut keys, simply type the tool or function name in the search box. On the left side, you can see some of the basic tools. In vertex select mode, right click to see the vertex tools. In edge select mode, right click to see the edge tools. And face select mode, right click to see the face tools. Let's start with a new scene. As you can see this is the subdivision surface modifier. Basically what it does is, subdivided the faces or vertices while smoothing them. You can increase the subdivision levels to get a more smoothed and more detailed mesh. Normally subdivision level 2 is enough in most cases. You can use shortcut keys to go between subdivision level 0, 1, and 2. Now let's see how we can create a hard surface by hardening the particular edge of a model. To do that, we have to add support edges on both sides of that particular edge. You can use the loop cut tool for that. You can define the number of loop cuts by scrolling the mouse wheel. You can place the edge loop on the surface and drag it to the desired position and release it. Increase the subdivision level and see the result. This theory applies to an open surface mesh too. Apply Shade Smooth to the object to smooth. I forgot to tell you how to add operations or functions to your Quick Favorite menu. Simply go to the operations or tools or function you like to add to Quick Favorite. Then right click on it. Then add to Quick Favorite. I already added, it, so now I can only remove. You can access the Quick Favorite menu using shortcut keys. Default one is the Q button. Now let's see how to use Extrude function. Go to the Tools menu and click on the Extrude region. Here I'm using a shortcut key for extruding. You can extrude vertices, edges, and faces. Now let's see how we create a hard surface mesh by adding edge loops. Add a subdivision surface modifier and use the loop cut tool to add edge loops. Apply shade smooth to smooth the object. Now let's see what happens when the two edges are far away. As you can see, this top edge is slightly curved when subdividing. This is negligible but if you want a super accurate mesh, you have to add more support edge loops. Now let's see how to use the bevel function. Click on the bevel tool or use shortcut keys to apply the bevel. Scroll the mouse wheel to define the bevel segments. Delete these faces and add a subdivision surface modifier. As you can see, 
when subdividing, the top edges are slightly curved just like before. To fix that, add some support edge loops using the loop cut tool. Make sure that these edges have similar lengths. Add an edge loop to the front face as well. Now the mesh is modeled as we wanted. Let's see what happens when we add more bevel segments. When modeling a hard surface mesh by using the subdivision surface modifier, you have to think about the final subdivided mesh and how many polygons you need. Then you have to decide whether you are going to make the base mesh with fewer polygons or more polygons. You can bevel the vertices too. Scrolling the mouse wheel will define the bevel segments. Now let's see about the inset function. Click on the inset button in the tools section or, in the face mode, click on the inset tool. Hold and release the left mouse button to inset a face. This will extrude the face at equal distances from the edges. Let's try this on a polygon cylinder. After the inset, add some support edge loops to harden the edges. Add a subdivision surface modifier. Let's look at the wireframe of the mesh. The middle face is a end gone. Look how it's subdivided. Now let's see what happens when there is only one support edge loop. Subdivided and gone creates a non-flat surface. Let's see how to inset the bottom and gone face correctly. This is how it looks like when there is one support edge loop at the bottom. This is how it looks like when there are two support edge loops at the bottom. Let's add another support edge loop to remove artifacts caused by the bottom and gone. Now let's compare the extrude and the inset. Make sure you have applied the scale. This will set the scale to 1 while maintaining the current shape. Let's create another cylinder without applying the scale. Add a subdivision modifier. Extrude the top face. Before releasing the left mouse button press escape to put the extruded face at the original position. Then scale it down. This will place the extruded face at different distances from the edges. This will create uneven hard edges when subdividing. So, normally we don't use extrude and scale function for objects like this. We use inset function in a situation like this. Now let's extrude and scale the top face of the object which we didn't apply the scale. Undo the previous operation and try the inset function. As you can see, both functions not working correctly on this object. So make sure you have applied the rotation and scale when you are using functions like extrude, scale and inset. For further understanding, let's look at these two cubes. Try extrude and scale function on this cube. Try and set function on this cube. Let's try extrude and scale on this object. See what happens. Let's use inset tool on the other object. Add subdivision surface modifier to see how it looks like when subdividing. As you can see, there are some artifacts on the top. That's because of the end gone face. To fix that, we have to use the knife tool. Let's see how we can do that. With knife tool, you can draw edges on a mesh.
when drawing edges you can see some information about knife tool option appear at the bottom of your screen. Press C to turn on the angle constraint. This will let you draw straight lines. While drawing, press X to turn on the cut through option. This will let you draw edges through the object. Now we can draw the edges on the surface. In most cases, it is better to use quads rather than triangles and end guns. This is a flat surface, so end guns and triangles won't be a problem. Let's see what happens when we have triangles near the edges which we plan to harden. Let's look at the wireframe of the object. As you can see there are some pinching issues going on here. Now look at these two curved meshes. The one that has a triangle causes some pinching issues. Let's see how we can harden an edge loop on a curved surface like this. First, we add some support edge loops for outer edges. We use matte cap with a shiny material for a better view. Think we want to harden this edge loop. We can add support edge loops just like before. Or we can bevel this edge loop with one segment. Beveled edge loops should be closer than the previous one. As you can see the second object is slightly different from the first one, but it will get the job done. The advantage of this, it has fewer polygons than the first one when subdividing. What if we need to harden this edge loop only? We can add support edge loops as usual. Then we merge these vertices and delete unnecessary edge loops. This will create triangles on our model. So we have to convert them to quads. For this object, we can bevel this edge loop with one segment and merge the vertices. When modeling, both methods can be used where appropriate. Let's see how we can harden these edge loops. For this kind of mesh, we can use the loop cut tool or knife tool to add support edges. Let's add a support edge loop using the loop cut tool. For this part, we can use the inset tool. We have to disable the boundary option. Use the knife tool to add support edge loops. Merge these vertices. Add another edge loop to make a nice curvy shape. Add support edge loops for corner edges too. Now let's see some different ways of adding support edge loops. We want to harden these edges. To add a support edge loop at the top, we can use inset tool with the boundary option disabled. Let's add support edge loops using the loop cut tool. To harden this edge loop, use the bevel function. Increase the shape value to 1. Now we have added two support edge loops. Let's harden this edge loop using the bevel. But it will harden this edge loop as well. Let's fix that. Merge the vertices. Another way is, we can use the loop cut tool. Let's go to the other object. Use loop cut tool to add support edge loops. Use the inset tool.
We are going to delete these faces and recreate the topology. Make a face. Add another support edge loop. Make faces. Merge the vertices. Convert triangles to quads. These are the two support edge loops. Add support edge loops just like we did to the other object. As you can see, these edges are hardened. To fix that, simply move the vertices. Now we can harden these edges. Let's see how we can add support edge loops for an object like this. As you can see, these two edges are unequal in length. Let's delete this edge. When we are using the loop cut tool, we can see the tool options at the top of the viewport. Let's press E button to turn on the even option. As you can see, the support edge loop is now parallel to the edge of the other side. So we have to flip it by pressing F button. We can apply this method when sliding an edge loop. Let's see how we can troubleshoot and clean up a model when there are some geometrical errors. Let's subdivide this object and apply shade smooth. As you can see, there are some shading artifacts going on here. It is because of a face located inside this mesh and it connects to the vertices of the mesh. Also, there is an isolated vertex. In a complex geometry, we can't identify these kind of geometrical errors easily. To do that, go to Select, Select All by Trait, Non-Manifold. Then turn off the Boundaries option. This way, we can identify those geometrical errors. Then we can fix them or delete them. Go to Select, Select All by Trait, Faces by Sides. Choose Greater than 4. This way, we can select the end gone faces and fix them. Look at these two objects. As you can see there are no errors in these objects. Let's go to the shading option and turn on the back face culling. Now we can see some holes on the surface. Actually, these are not holes. Normals of these faces are inverted. To select inverted faces, go to Select, Select All by Trait, Non-Manifold. Then turn off the Boundary option. This way, we can identify the geometrical errors as well as inverted faces. To fix that, go to Mesh, Normals, Flip. We have talked about some basic hard surface modeling tools and functions. If you have questions, comment them down below. Thank you for watching. See you next time.